Before we get to the video, I wanted to let you guys know we're having a huge clearance sale on the website. Discounts over 50% off on everything you can think of. Hats, shirts, drinkware, you name it. So click the link in the description and head over there and check it out. Iron Man, aka Tony Stark, is one of the most likable jerks in all of comics, but a big part of what makes him so fun is all the OP tech that he puts into those suits he builds. He's been at this for decades, and it's about time that we highlighted some of the most ridiculous armors Iron Man has ever built. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 Craziest Iron Man Suits. Number 10. Let's kick off this top 10 by thinking outside the box a little bit. What if your Iron Man suit had an Iron Man suit? That's basically what the Hulkbuster is. And if the name didn't make it obvious enough, this thing's sole purpose is bringing down the big green world breaker. This armor's got a gamma radiation radar just for hunting some hulks, plus some irradiated shielding to protect from cellular degeneration, because nobody likes it when their cells start melting. But if you're squaring off against the angry green giant, you've got to pack a punch that can equal his. So the Hulkbuster uses freaking rocket boosters to propel its punches, plus something called the shock and awe system. This lets Tony launch enough energy to power a continent. I am in fact shocked and in awe. Fun fact, that Hulkbuster we saw in Age of Ultron looks an awful lot like suit model number 52 in the comics. Only the one in the comics could turn into a car. Iron Man vs. Transformers when? Number 9 Iron Man vs. Transformers now! Or 2007, the year the issues came out. Sue me, I don't care. The anti-transformer armor isn't the most powerful or even the most functional suit that Tony's ever made, but the fact that he built a transformer-sized suit just because he heard some rumors about giant alien robots is freaking great. With this big honkin' suit, he can whack fighter jets out of the sky, blast Decepticons apart, and even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Megatron. For like 10 seconds before Megatron chopped its head off, but you know. At least it got Tony dreaming of whether or not he could build an even bigger one someday. If it means more weird crossovers like this, we say yes please. Also the answer is yes, he can in fact build a bigger one. You might see that later. Just a spoiler alert. Number 8 Just cause he's Iron Man, that doesn't mean he hogs all the goods to himself. Sometimes Tony gives his best buddies suits too. Just like in Civil War, when he gave Peter Parker the Iron Spider armor as a thank you gift for joining his side of the war. This suit gives Spidey mid-range gliding, a GPS, audiovisual amplification, and what did you know it, it even makes him look more like a spider. Those extra arms are in fact like an actual set of extra arms, if those arms also had eyeballs. What I'm saying is he can grab stuff and he can see with the extra arms, that's all I'm trying to say here. Plus, like any suit worthy of the Stark name, the Iron Spider armor protects against dang near everything, and even comes with a camo layer that blends into any environment. Yeah, the suit's nice. But it's not gonna bring back Uncle Ben. Number seven. If it wasn't already obvious, we uh, we, we love ourselves some crossovers here at Screw Attack. So when Doctor Doom and Iron Man crossed over with Arthurian lore, it made for one of the greatest armors in Iron Man's history: the Mystic Armor. In Iron Man: Legacy of Doom, the Doc steals the legendary Excalibur. So what you gonna do about it? Mystic Armor. Get your science bull crap out of this house because this suit is magical. Plus that ponytail? Spiffy. It looks like Fulgore from Killer Instinct, only longer and flowier. But the best part? He's completely invulnerable. Like, fly into an oil tanker and go boom as a distraction kind of invulnerable. Yeah, sure, the Mystic Armor's dumb, but it's the fun kind of dumb. Number six. Here's another well-known classic. Remember that time Tony had to inject himself with the extremist virus to, like, not succumb to his wounds and die? That was fun. Also, it gave us the extremist armor. One of the coolest things about this suit is that Tony can summon and operate it with his brain. But that's not all that's crazy about it. The extremist armor has gravity grips on the gloves, turbines in the boots that blast Iron Man and over Mach 8, and somehow a version of Doctor Doom's time machine. All of them are controlled with his brain. Oh, and it can also do this other thing where it taps into the satellite network so that Mr. Stark can remotely call on his other armors too. Only problem is it's sort of impossible to use extremist armor without being on extremist the drug, but not many Iron Man suits let Tony do this much cool stuff with his brain. Number five. Oh, you know you've got a crazy suit when people think that it's something called the God Killer. After Tony joined the Guardians of the Galaxy, he was all like, 
I should make a suit that I can use in deep space. So he made the deep space suit. I know that name sounds kind of boring compared to some of the others on this list, but trust me, this thing is anything but. How can it be boring when it's powered by multiple repulsor tech cores, Pepper AI, and the Stark Omniversal Multitasking Software? You know, the, the tech that lets Tony control other armors from hundreds of light years away? And like so many suits before it, the deep space armor is modular, and it even comes with the mobile armory. Perfect for interplanetary travel, or dropping bombs on Soviet war machines on the moon. Yes, that's real. Number four. All these Iron Man armors are about putting a dude inside of a suit. But I ask you this, internet, what if you put the suit inside of the dude? Tony Stark and Reed Richards put their heads together to create model number 37, the Bleeding Edge armor, which does pretty much exactly what I was just saying. It uses the nanotechnology from Extremis to keep an entire Iron Man suit inside Tony's body. No lie, the thought of that kinda gives me the heebie-jeebies, but when you understand how insane this armor is, it's worth it. The Bleeding Edge armor is powered by an RT node, which gives Tony superhuman levels of intelligence and lets the armor take on whatever form he wants. He can make it look like normal clothes, armors, or even different beings. And since it's nanotech we're dealing with here, the thing is basically indestructible just so long as it's got access to Tony's arc reactor juice. That sounds gross. So TLDR, Bleeding Edge armor basically makes Tony Stark a Green Lantern, but with science and not space magic. But then it got space magic when Odin gave it some Asgardian enchantments that temporarily turned it into the Iron Destroyer. That is one of the most metal things I have ever seen. Number three. If you thought the Hulkbuster was impressive, just check out what Tony did when he had to bring down the Phoenix Force. In the Avengers vs. X-Men event, Tony built a weapon to try and kill the unkillable. And he called it the Phoenix Buster Armor. Yes, it's dumb looking. Yes, it looks exactly like E-102 Gamma from Sonic Adventure, but if you understood how powerful this suit was, you would not be laughing. Even though it doesn't quite kill this flaming space bird, the Phoenix Buster still lives up to its name by blasting the Phoenix Force into five pieces. This eventually leads to Wolverine stabbing Cyclops in the face and everybody's favorite bald psychic Professor Man dying. Is it stupid? Yeah, kinda. But it is crazy. Number two. One of the latest suits in Stark technology is also one of the slickest looking that Tony has ever made. Even though it makes him look like a walking Apple computer, the Endosim armor is actually a living organism. A symbiote, to be exact. So instead of the usual sort of suit-up sequence, this one is more like getting Nickelodeon slimed and coming out with one of the most powerful Iron Man armors ever. Even so, it's pretty tough to beat some of the feats we've mentioned from his previous suits. That is, until the part in Superior Iron Man where he basically defeats a mental projection of himself powering the previous 49 suits. Since the Endosim armor is pretty much Tony wearing an alien, there's no AI or remote control options, but if it's so stupidly powerful that it can single-handedly destroy all the previous suits, shouldn't that even matter? The answer is no. It's definitely no. It's number one. Iron Man suits are usually sleek and futuristic, but we can also appreciate the gritty end of the spectrum. Even though we love that Tony's pal Rhodey rocks the Second Amendment as hard as he can with the War Machine suit, that armor is not number one. But Rhodey did pilot number one. Listen, if for some reason you've ever dreamed of what it might look like to wear a space satellite, take a look at the satellite armor. Tony somehow built this gigantic machine and put it into space completely in secret just in case a major catastrophe ever came up. So when the Skrulls tried to invade Earth, he sent good old Rhodey into orbit to check out his latest creation, only for Rhodey to discover that his buddy had gone full-blown crazy with this thing. And then, for eight glorious pages, War Machine Shraka cooms through every last scroll ship South Philly style and saves the day in the absolute most ridiculous fashion. And it's awesome. I love it. The satellite armor is the kind of thing that makes every single other Iron Man suit look tame and reserved in comparison. Tony Stark should be very, very proud. For a secret number 11, you can't have Squirrel Girl without a little bit of craziness coming along with her. Surprise, surprise, she once had her own Iron Man suit, 
complete with a tail. A teenage girl with a tail wearing an Iron Man suit to fly to the moon is in fact pretty crazy. 